So hello everyone, I'm here with Daniel and today we are going to talk about the latest publication from our lab, which is a paper that came out in the Journal of Nutritional Biochemistry. And the topic that we are actually uh, discussing in this, in this study is the effect of a ketogenic diet or how the ketogenic diet regulates glucose and fat metabolism in white and brown adipose tissues. So to start, let's first establish what the rationale is for this study, Daniel. What, what was the reason? What were we thinking when we actually came up with this study? So the ketogenic diet is known to promote weight loss. Uh, we wanted to see whether that weight loss inducing effect could be attributed to alterations in energy expending pathways in white and brown adipose tissue, whether it could be attributed to the physiology of fat. Okay, so and this is was based on the observations that we have in humans that on a ketogenic diet there is a reduction, a significant reduction in fat mass. Yes. Okay, good. So how did we actually approach this question? How did what did we do to address this uh, this question. So we actually fed three groups of rats, uh, three different diets for four months or 16 weeks. One of them was a standard rat chow. The second was the typical obesogenic diet, which is high in fat and rich in sucrose or sugar. And we also took a ketogenic diet fed group, which consumed primarily fat, a bit of protein and absolutely no carbohydrates. So lots of fat in that diet, but no carb. Okay, so but we also wanted to make sure that we didn't reduce protein too much because we wanted to keep protein at a normal level. Well, protein was actually equivalent between 20 to 30 percent in all three groups, so it was not or it was controlled at least. Okay, so protein was equal in all of them. Mm -hmm. What differed was the amount of fat and carbohydrate. That's right. Okay, so what were the most important findings that we had with this? Uh, experiment. So uh, the ketogenic diet actually increased energy expending pathways in white and brown adipose tissue. But despite that, or to our surprise, it didn't induce a loss in fat mass. It didn't decrease fat mass, at least compared to the obesogenic diet fed group. Mm -hmm. So it looks like, I mean, what we observed was that the white adipose tissue had a high rate of breakdown of fat and the brown adipose tissue has had also an incre increased its machinery to actually break down fat and produce heat. Yep. So the biochemical machinery in both tissues, the white and brown, to dissipate energy actually was upregulated. Yep. But unfortunately, and as you said, by to our surprise, it didn't translate in a reduction in fat mass. Now, do you think that it has anything to do with the amount of food that they ate? So what's, what's interesting is the animals were fed ad libitum, meaning they could eat as much as they wanted to. They had the food available to them, but they all, all three groups consumed the same number of calories. They were isocaloric. Now in humans, when we see weight loss, typically it's a voluntary decrease in caloric intake. Humans feel satiated more with the ketogenic diet. They feel more full and they voluntarily consume fewer calories or they're in a hypocaloric state. In our study, the animals ate the same number of calories. So despite there being shifts in the energy dissipating mechanisms in white and brown adipose tissue and ketogenic diet fed rats, it probably wasn't sufficient or, or enough of an increase in energy expenditure to cause a decrease in weight. The interesting thing is that you can really modify metabolism in white and brown fat by playing with the diet. It may not necessarily translate into weight loss, but it could, it helps us to understand why in some cases, in, in particular cases in humans that are exposed to this diet, it may actually be very effective. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so what are the implications then of this findings, Then, What are the major conclusions we would draw from this? So again, it doesn't, in this particular case, when you have similar caloric intake, it won't attenuate weight loss, but it is important to note that an alteration in the macronutrient composition of the diet, so changing the fat and the carbohydrate, has a profound effect on the machinery within white and brown fat, and it does change the way that these adipose tissues work. Okay, excellent, because from, we, we also have to think that this dietary approach is not only for weight loss. 
It may also be used to improve metabolic regulation, glycemic control, and other things that even though you may not have a, a reduction in fat mass, but you may have an alteration in the way how the organism works or the tissue, specific uh, tissues work in a way that it can be more conducive to a better regulation of glucose metabolism, for instance. On that note, we measured, for instance, insulin responsiveness in the adipose tissue with the ketogenic diet, and it was preserved. And that's not something that we could say for the obesogenic diet, where you did have an impairment in responsiveness to insulin. Um, so, yeah, it does, it does maintain function. So we could actually identify two clear, important points. One is if you're looking specifically to weight loss. And the other one is we are looking at how the system works or how the organism improves its metabolic regulation in a way that it can have other beneficial effects such as better glycemic control. That's right. And the adipose tissue is a crucial organ because in terms of insulin resistance when you in an, in an un, under obesogenic conditions, it can ha play a very important role in actually detriment or cause detrimental effects to health. Absolutely. Okay, so to finalize, Daniel, then what is the, what are the next steps? What else did we look in this study that I think it's also relevant, not only for energy expenditure, but also for in this idea of improving metabolic control? We actually, we took the same three groups of animals and we also assessed skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is a crucial tissue for postprandial uh, glucose disposal or glucose disposal following a meal and we looked at the effects of the high fat sucrose rich diet and the ketogenic diet on how the body or how the skeletal muscle handles glucose so if the diet would have an effect on this parameter and also how the diet affects the muscle's ability to handle fat as well as ketones and these three metabolic substrates and so we're hoping we've submitted that for publication and we're hoping to hear back at some point, but we're really excited about that study. Yeah, and we, I think the important thing that we, we want to mention is that we used different muscles with different fiber types. Yes. So we used muscles that are basically mostly oxidative, others that are, or another one that is mostly glycolytic, and one that has the ability to go both ways. That's right, yeah. Mixed fiber type. And I think that this is very important because from my physiological point of view, muscles are, they differ. Not all muscles are created the same. They have different uh, uh, fiber type distributions and this has a major impact on the way how they manage substrates or how they process different substrates such as fat, glucose, and even ketones. It, which has implications for both health as well as exercise and performance. Excellent. So stay tuned because as soon as we have, we hear back from the reviewers and hopefully it's a positive response, we'll be able to come back and report on the actual findings that we had. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Daniel, for Thank this. You. Thank you. And see you in the next. Bye for now.